Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another 12-12 AD Siege Battle for you today and today Jerusalem is defending Constantinople, the Byzantines are clearly on holiday and they have left this great city, this great Roman city in the hands of the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem. So yeah, a bit strange that the Byzantines would hand over uh, the kingdom and the uh, city to the Latins after you know what they did in 1204. But uh, yes, they are here defending all the Crusaders against the armies of Islam. We have four Islamic armies on the attack here today. We have, I think, two Ottoman armies. We have a uh, Sultan of Rum. Uh, and then the we also have the Mamluks the as well on the far end over there. Defending, we have Jerusalem. We have Antioch. And we have Genoa, so yeah, we do have sort of like some mercenaries, I guess, here supporting uh, the the Crusaders. And we have, of course, the Holy Cross. We have the uh, the Caraccio standard, and it's got its uh, you know its bell. It's going glorious, it is. Yes, and this this glorious man here has been uh, given charge of looking after the cross and the bell. And yes, he's looking like he's going places very very quickly. You know, <laughs> he's clearly you know moving. With speed, and he's getting around. I uh, I really don't know if, to this day whether it actually does anything for like morale or anything like that. But I honestly believe it must have. It must do. Otherwise, uh, I don't really know what its purpose is. But yeah, it looks like the Mamluks are already starting their assault on this side of here, and they've got a lot of chevron stuff. I'm just seeing like off the bat here, like great bombard, silver, triple silver chevron. Yeah, my gosh, we've got Tabadere here, like all silver chevron. I think. It's like any period you want by the looks of it as well. Lots of tier two, tier three the units being brought. Fallen. And it looks like most of the Turkish factions here are all bringing great bombards uh, to try and make as many breaches as possible. You can see gunners on the wall here um, already being devastated by artillery. And we've also got a unit outside the walls here. We've got Genoa bending this little uh, sort of like choke point here with a heavy sword of Judah. It's not a bad idea, but they are obviously taking a lot of fire here. And uh, that is. I mean, there's a lot of wasteful ammunition being used up, but it is also Bocab that is using it, so not really the end of the world for them. We've got um, Bastion cannons on the wall for Constantinople as well, pushing back those daring Turks as they try and get a bit closer. And it looks like, uh, yeah, Jerusalem over here, it looks like he's got a hard game. It looks like he's going to be facing off against two Ottoman armies here. So this is the real strength here of the attack. It's, it's two armies here worth of troops. And we've got a, both a mortar and also a bas uh, great bombard, sorry, being used. And we have Nafatun. Yeah, they're really bringing the firepower in uh, this army. And it looks like they're trying to take out, I was going to say, trying and successfully taking out uh, the tower there, which had the, the cannon on for the defenders. So yeah, they've lost their firepower there, have the defenders. But yes, if you're enjoying all things 1212 AD and medieval and would like to see some more medieval action on the channel, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support, guys. It really does help out the channel. And yes, we're working towards 11k, I guess, now. So yeah, if you haven't already subscribed and you want to see more of this content, or you're watching this content already and you haven't subscribed, you know, just hit that subscribe button. It's free. But you know what isn't free? Freedom. And it's got earned and won here by the men of Genoa. And they are going to have to fight on hard against the Mamluk army here. It's going to cost them a lot of blood. We'll see what happens. Here we go. The siege towers have landed. And in come the Mamluks. And these, I don't actually know what these are. We don't often see the Mamluks in action. I don't really recognize these units. But they're definitely on Tabadri. Oh, it's just Rajala Ashir. Light melee infantry. Yeah, they are, even though they're silver chevron, I doubt they're going to be getting through these medium uh, Gen Genoese infantry up here. And you know, has really stacked these walls. My gosh, they're just... Full of medium swords. It's going to make for a grindy fight, that's for sure. And yeah, you got the, uh, the towers and the ladders as well. I think the ladders look better in the way. You can see the men climbing over them. They look awesome. There you go. The men are landing. And Genoa is getting stuck in into the fight. We've got, it looks like we've got uh, some Mamluks as well here. Some hybrid units that are trying to fire over the wall. Trying to support their units. You can see that's what, exactly what these rangers are trying to do. Trying to, you know, support where they can. And it looks like we've also got a lot of uh, knights here. Lots of Genoese knights. They're most of a tier 1 by the looks of it. So, obviously not as much money put in as like tier 2 or tier 3. But yeah, the tier 1 knights getting ready for a sally out, really, by the looks of it. It looks like also the gate may have been destroyed. And it looks like we're going to see a charge here from the cab. It's going to go straight through and try and deal with this sword unit here. And there you go, the oil coming down. That is going to be costly there for the Mamluks. Yeah, it looks like a light cab as well. So yeah, like armor is not going to be great yet. It's a uh, very light shock cab or light shock cab. It's going to try and pull through as well. Which is 
it's just if anything gonna just cost it more lives and it's cheating anyway and yeah they are uh, getting burnt alive was boiled alive by the boiling oil there you go that sword unit should have no issues there if anything i just put a pole on there just to make sure that it's gonna be like very okay but the gu guarded jukal's already getting shot up uh, by something it seems and it looks like as well that sword unit just got absolutely trampled there by horse archers and we now got Cavs selling out Antioch and Knights here. And they're going in to fight the uh, horse archers here. And we're having a fight outside the walls of Constantinople. How glorious. Good enough to see Antioch in uh, battles as well. But uh, yeah, they are here very much in force. And yeah, the Antioch and Knights. I mean, a yeah, good old fight that is. Against all these uh, bow cav, they are heavy bow cav most of them here. But yeah, I mean... They should still get killed off by that heavy shock cav in Plong Melian. Looks like we've got Guardia Jukal, a pole arm unit going out as well to try and get rid of this cav. And uh, yeah, that's a really good idea. So uh, get rid of them. And if the Antokan Knights can win here, they could then get all these Azab archers, which are just light archers. Oh, actually, we've got some Janissaries as well here. The Turks have their own Janissary units as well as the Ottomans. And uh, yeah, they could sally out and try and deal with them. But it looks like finally the Sultan of Rum is sort of supporting that fight. Uh, the Antiochian Knights are also starting to lose because of the uh, Archer Fire. The, uh, the Guardian Jukal just gets in there and should mop that up. Over on this side here as well, looks like there's been a sally out by Jerusalem Cyprian Knights. Sallying out to do these Janissaries. I guess trying to slow the Turks down from getting to the walls. Which is not a bad idea. Uh, please don't pull through, Turks. Please don't pull through. Sort of looks like they are a little bit. I don't know. Hard to see what the Cyprian Knights are. I think maybe they just gave the att attack order and maybe just get a bit closer. I also can't tell how many Cyprian Knight units are in there. Two, by the looks of it. Uh, and back on this side here, the Antiochian Knights have won. The Guardian Ducal really helped out there. They need to get back inside the wall now because they are going to be uh, real focused for the archers here of the uh, Turks. They do not want to stay out there. And we've got more uh, mounted sergeants here. Okay, so we've got yeah, more knights. Oh, well, more cavalry anyway, that um, Antioch can bring the air. Uh, Sergeants on knights, I should know that. The gunners appear as well from Genoa, you know. They've got a good uh, good angle right now. They can just fire down into the uh, Turks' blow. But yes, if you want to get involved in any sort of 12-12 AD battles, whether you're a newbie or whether you're a hardened veteran, all are welcome. Um, we do plenty of 12-12 like, battles, streams, scenarios on the uh, channel. So if you want to get involved in any of those, Feel free to join my Discord, the link is down below in the description, and go get yourself a 12-12 AD roll. Or even if you're a fan of any of the Total War, you need some games. Feel free to join as well, you're welcome to. There's spears landing on the wall now, so what are these? I don't know, but it's Silver Shell, and they are losing. Oh, huge collapse there for Genoa. I mean, quite literally, the Genoese line has collapsed as the wall has collapsed below them. And a big hole in the uh, in the wall has opened up. It looks like Genoa kind of saw it coming. He's got uh, crossbows and swords getting ready into position to protect against that. The uh, yeah, Great Bombard has done its work there. And uh, um, it looks like it cost the Mamluks a few troops, but they're light infantry. It doesn't really matter. Their lives don't matter. These mediums are obviously a lot more uh, expensive. And it looks like we've got cavalry here that's also moving into position. They could sally out, potentially. It looks like a lot of the infantry here for the Mamluks is tied on the wall. Uh, the hybrids are decent in melee, but they don't know that they're ready to go in yet. And the uh, cr look at that. The Great Bombard crew is focused down now by crossbows, but it's a little too late. It's done its work. It's blown up that wall, and there's uh, an entry point now for the Mamluks if they want to use it to go in uh, that way. And it looks like and what we've got here, we've got just a uh, light cav. So nothing really they can like spearhead their way through. Their general is obviously a bit more uh, heavy, but you don't, don't want to send him in just yet. And again, it looks like also on this side, Genoa is, you know, back to his old tricks, putting the sword here in the in the front lines. He's just gonna let the uh, the Azabs try and waste their ammunition on that. I mean, it's it's working quite well. It's slowing down an entire uh, Turkish army there. Oh, and we got the grenadiers coming forward here, and they are throwing the grenades. It looks like into a Cyprian knights over there. We kind of missed the first volley. We'll see whether they get another one off here. Let's see whether they go for it. Go on, fellas. You know you want to blow them up. They're going to get focused down if they don't be too careful. They need to get back. Uh, actually, looks like the Cyprian Knights might sally out onto the Grenadiers here. To, into the, uh, into the Nafatoons, I should call them. There you go. And they come. They're closing the gap. And these guys aren't good at melee. So, yeah, if they get caught in melee, they are just in 
trouble. And there you go, the Navitoons are sort of getting out of there. A few of them will fall there. Okay, looks like they lost a few. And the Cyprians, yeah, being slowed down now by some Aboynik swords and spears. Yeah, I mean, the Jerusalem's doing a good job here, slowing down the Ottomans. The Ottomans, like I said, not really using that 2v1 sort of advantage uh, very well. Antioch also has troops over here as well. He's got some dismounted Templar Knights uh, fighting for him. Interesting to see. And then, I mean, there's a lot of shock infantry here. We've got dismounted Templars and Hospitallers for Jerusalem. They brought a lot of shock, they did. So it looks like they were ready to defend the walls. Whether they're going to have to, I don't know. It looks like, uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a grind fest there. And there's a grind fest now taking place here as well as we have the uh, Immunity de Arm. And also now we have Hospitallers sallying out for Antioch. It looks like they're fighting against the uh, the Turks here. We've got Janissary Halberdiers. A whole bunch of other stuff in here. It looks like Azaps as well. The yeah, Azap Swordsman. As you can see, I mean, this hospital is a triple silver chevron. They aren't going anywhere anytime soon. These are the cream of the crop of the order. That is for sure. We've got mounted sergeants. Oh, it's because the spears are getting off the walls. So yeah, Mamluks are actually making some progress. Uh, and the sergeants, I think, are going for a rear charge here. This is the risk from coming off the walls. And they are getting rear charged. I mean, the right units to take off the walls as well. The player did it right. They brought spears off. So it is anti cav but he got... Attacked by spear, uh, by swords first, which pinned him, allowing the cabs to get a good rear charge. The mountain sergeants there are doing very, very well. Uh, they might lose cab on the uh, on the exit, but that's fine. They're doing a really good job there, charging these uh, spears very nicely. Genoa seems like yeah, he's doing a really good job here. I mean, the Mamluks are slowly taking the walls over though, and it looks like also we've got uh, knights over here actually slamming into those light swords that have come off the walls and uh, the guarded Drakal here killing this is not a good good use of cab by the uh, Mamluk players he's getting a little impatient I think using his cab to try and go through the gate and he's just, yeah, just getting kebabbed there by the guarded Drakal and I imagine yeah I mean you can see the swords here tr just trying to hold back multiple units of Mamluk so there's four units down there and the crossbows and the sergeants here are just, you know, cycle charging. It's actually the uh, sergeants of Antioch here yeah. to just realize they're supporting Genoa. So Antioch's a bit everywhere at the moment. Playing a very big support role. Yeah, the, the uh, hospital is still holding on there. The Turks are really blobbing up. It is tough to attack Constantinople. Uh, I think this is the late period, um, like Constantinople, like, uh, like the, the large period, like the large version. Not the late period. A large version because you have like the, the trench you can see here with the moat sorry uh, and the bridges so it is very very tough to sort of la land all your towers because you've just got a single one that you can send up at a time so yeah the defenders just have to just sally out and it just really just defeats the, the uh the option of that the turks have actually managed to get inside the almonds here are inside and it is shock against spears so, you know it is a good A good uh, like option for them. Like the uh, Ottomans do want to use like shock in this uh, in this scenario, and they are winning decisively against the spears here. Have he's, I mean, spears against shock. The spears will get messed up, so that that's working well. But they don't want to blob up too much. Like the Ottomans, I think, you know, getting a little bit too ahead of themselves here. You see here, yeah, Janissaries are starting to. Uh, Start to win, but they don't want to send in more stuff. They've got Janus Street Archer setting up. We've got Gunners here actually uh, setting up a breach point. This is not a bad idea. And this breach point could be another way in. It's honestly probably a better way in than the gate because it's not going to pour oil onto you. And uh, yeah, it looks like the, um, the Nathro is nearly out of ammo as well. Looks like uh, we've kind of missed them being used. But it doesn't look like they've done too much in this in this game. The uh, Mortar as well is still shelling away, trying to just, you know, hit large blobs of troops. And if you want a large blob of troops to hit, look at that gate. That is a perfect example of a blobbing up there. There's multiple units of Crusaders in here. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that is that is going to be a pain there, that is for sure, to try and deal with. But see where they can get through. We'll come back to that in a moment. I'm going to check the other fronts. Looks like the uh, Turks here still in their fight, still fighting it. Antioch's actually m now put crosses outside the wall, and he's now dueling with the archers here of the Turks. And looks like he is winning that fight hand over fist. I mean, probably because he has protection, and also because these are heavy crossbows against a light bow infantry. So, you know, armor piercings on his side and also just armor. He has uh, just everything going his way. So, yeah, that is uh, unfortunate there for the Turks. A general is all that's left. And I really don't know what this Turks player, do, like this rum player, is doing. All it's going to take is just a little uh, encirclement, and they're going to get routed, that is for sure. The Mamluks look like they're making the most progress, but they also, uh, you know, worryingly for me, had the least amount of troops left by the looks of it. Uh, and really, I would I'd really want to see a sally out now by the by the cab. I think they have enough. They can sally out and attack the remaining uh, Mamluks outside the walls and also go for the general if they wanted to and just really cut off the head of the snake. If they kill that general, it would probably mass route the most of these troops in here. They're getting really bunched in, really squashed in by these sergeants, which clearly don't mind just, you know, cycle charging. They don't want to sally out. They want to stay inside, keep getting free kills on these uh, tabs of air and spears that keep just landing off the walls. And really the next move now for the uh, Mameluk player should be to put these gunners onto the wall. He should keep in what infantry he can on the walls. And he is already, look, you can see gunners on the walls. And then he just forces the defenders back away from the walls. He gives himself some breathing space. But uh, yeah, he needs to try and do that a little bit more. Same with the Mamluks. If they've got some ammo left, get them on the walls. Just, you know, try and like use that as a platform to sort of now uh, push back the defenders. Like, Genoa does not have a lot left here. He's got a pole arm and some cav. Like, you're probably going to beat the rest of his infantry on the wall. That's fine. He's not got a lot left. You can just sort of like, if you can with your range units, just force back the defender when you land on the walls with them. Obviously, like the defender might have range units himself, but in this case, Genoa has nothing here. So, uh, yeah, it would be a great opportunity just to use your own range and just force back those melee units and the cav as well from the walls. As you can see, Genoa is helping, uh, it looks like Antioch over here, and he's mounting up all of his crossbows and he's just, you know, firing to the blob down here. Janus' pole arms are wavering and breaking, so that is not good at all. And it looks like now, finally, the Turks are going through the other choke on here. And why are there Janus' in here with, like, gunners? Janus' gunners in here, I do not know. Whether it's pathfinding or whether, I don't know, what the player was thinking. Get him out of there. I mean, they're, they're going to route, yeah, unfortunately. You can see the uh, Nafatoons are in there. They have no ammunition left. And the Janus 3 shock, which is going in. And the Janus 3 archers might be going into melee soon. But they're okay in melee. They are hybrids. I'd rather they use all their ammo, but uh, it's, they're okay in melee. But look at this. Templars sallying out. They're going to charge into the side of the Turks here. Oh, yes. That is nice. The Templars here saving Christendom. There you go. It's a very nice charge. It's like losing a couple of riders. Looks like they are getting hit by missiles from across the river there. You can see some gunners. and It looks like... That's it, really. Actually, gunners and... Oh, are these gunners firing as well? All the way back there? And seriously? Wow. Um, but yeah, gunners firing. Just seeing a few of them. But that was good. And now it means that the Turks are going to have to keep spears just to block that spot there. It occupies more infantry. And it will also allow the Antioch player to just fire over the top of this wall and hit to the side of them. Get some side shots. Uh, if they wanted to. But yeah, it looks like the Turks have given up with the gate. What's in is it? Oh, more Janus and gunners. Seriously. They do not do well in melee. Gunners do not do well in melee. You can see down here, the hospitalers are holding strong. The silver chevrons have done their bit. Actually, these ones don't have silver chevrons. They're just all regular hospitalers. I think the Turks have more chevrons. Yeah, this is what I was saying. So now you can see that these uh, these crossbows here, if they wanted to, they're not just yet, but they could if they wanted to, fire over the side and hit these uh, these, uh, these spearmen in the side. I mean, also, you've got these uh, crossbows, these tier one Templar crossbows. If they wanted to, they could just fire straight down into there. Like, these fellas here got a point blank shot just into these guys. Just pick your targets. That's what I'd say. Like, I oh, know that guy's mine. I'm aiming at him. You take someone else. 
Uh, it looks like again another Sally out looking like it's getting ready. And it looks like there's a complete collapse here for the uh, run player. I imagine they were going to go first. Very unconventional, one dimensional assault, really. I mean, obviously, there isn't much you can do. But in that case, you just don't attack. You just keep blasting away at the wall. But, I mean, the bombard just needs to keep opening up choke points uh, and destroying towers and stuff like that. And if you run out of ammo and you're having no joy, you go for other, somewhere else. Looks like the Mamluks are having a, good, a lot of joy. That would have been a better spot to try and get through. But they didn't go for that. We got, oh, we got Marcelo Spearman. I was like, I can see Byzantine troops in here. And it's because, yeah, we have the, uh, like the, sort of like the Greeks uh, fighting for the, for the run. Side, it just, yeah. Looks very strange. Like, these are the only Byzantine troops that were home, apparently. And they're here trying to retake their, play, their home. They are slowly being routed. I, uh, I think it's just because of army losses, I think. But I think we're gonna see a sally out soon here. You can see like this Antiochian Knight's gonna try and join the fight, try and help kill these guys off. I mean, I think they've also just been focused down so much. There's so many like uh, crossbow units here just doing their bit. But yeah, you can see Antioch is sallying out now. We've got a lot of mounted sergeants, Antiochian Knights. We've got also a general's bodyguard going out. And they are all going to sally out this way here. And uh, yeah, you can see the rum general over here is running for his life. He's coming back over to this side to help with the Mameluk uh, front. The Mameluk's still having no joy getting off this wall. The knights are just smashing them. And this is what I'm saying. The gunners just need to do their bit. He is finally getting gunners and archers onto the wall, which is good to see. But uh, yeah, his general, or the two generals out here will be very much in danger. And also the Turks could be in danger as well because they could obviously come for them as well. And it looks like the Turks now are sending a lot of uh, Stella. That is, yeah, but that's just there as well. Like, yeah, we've got lots of these guys being sent in that direction. Lots of sort of like, I think he's like Serbian, uh, like lords, that are like loyal to the uh, Turks. I think they're one of the highest, like, tip, like ranking, like, cab units, shock cab you can get. Not as good as the CPI cab, but you know, Nothing still very good. Of this unit now. Yeah, having no joy getting through here so far at the moment. It's, just, it's Blob Central over here. Blob Central. But Jerusalem holds. Units have returned to the battle. Looks like uh, the Janissaries here as well, you know. Just waiting, waiting for the opportunity. They need to start firing back in, trying to, I don't know, hit some of these, uh, like, shock infantry units. I don't know. The Turks have just got, they've got to think of some idea. There's a lot of gunners being brought here, I'd like to say, by the, by the, by the Turks. They brought a lot of gunners um, and a lot of cav, actually, as well. I mean, I know they, there is the risk of getting sallied out on, and... They are being sallied out on. A lot of cav, I feel like, for a siege battle. Especially a siege battle. I mean, it is very open once you get inside. So maybe that's what they were hoping for. Like, you know, Constantinople. Like, once you're in, look at this. So much space. But, uh, yeah. It's it's not... It's not easy. I mean, it's one of those... Set, set, yeah, it's one of those settlements that you fight at the walls. And you die at the walls. For sure. Like, some of the other maps... Like, you... Uh, yeah, you can just, like, you know... Retreat to the final choke... Final choke points, the final like sort of settlement, and try and hold there. That is, th this is not one of them. Oh, and to be fair, the Turks are in. The Turks and the Mamluks have got in a little bit, but they're getting pinned back by the knights here and Gadi Jukal, and they're going to be stuck in the gate, which is you know going to again pour boiling oil onto them. And we are seeing now the Mamluks come off the walls, gunners, and also. Uh, the hybrids coming off of whether they're trying to support this. So yeah, again, the Mamluks having, again, the most joy here. And this is where the Crusaders are bringing their reinforcements. The General's Bodyguard here of Genoa and also the Mounted Sergeants. They're all coming in this direction. Uh, the Crossbow is also trying to loop around, I'd like to say. But they're getting chased by uh, Vlatisella. They might get caught in a moment. We are trying to see, you know, some hybrid, some, sorry, hi not hybrid, some crossbows here and some gunners. They look like they're going to try and shoot into the uh, Turkish cab, especially if it just stands there on ceremony. That is a perfect target there for those crossbows. 
You can see they're now turning around and facing off against the new threat. Looks like we're going to see Antioch and Knight. They're going to charge into these hybrids here that have just come off the walls. They're like, we're safe. We finally can come off the walls. Oh, no, you can't. Here come the Antioch and Knight flying on in. Getting their maces out now. They're going to start slapping those Mamelukes around. Crushing skulls. Brains will be spilling out into the streets. But there you go. The Mamelukes are getting much, very much murdered. And there we go. The cab is much engaged, is very much engaged as well. Genoa going in. And it looks like it's losing his general. The Antiochian general's supporting. We're now seeing the Black Castella getting surrounded here by Antiochian knights. And if it gets surrounded like this, getting rear charged, this is probably not going to uh, do any good for the Serbian nobles. We're going to cause them to lose. One of them is losing. Again, I mean, they just sent all their cav in. And they are uh, kind of just allowed themselves to be encircled. They had a, just as much cav as the Crusaders in this matchup here. And also we got the general here for the Ottomans. Let's send him in at this point. Try and help save. Save the situation. They also could have sent the two generals. That's for sure, yeah. Ottomans could have sent both their generals. And they could have outnumbered the uh, Crusaders in this scenario. But I think they're just shooting from range, aren't they? Which isn't really going to do too much to change the difference here. And it looks like, yeah, the uh, the Serbs are holding it okay. Like, not by even, but some of them are losing. Units. And then slowly as it goes on, they're going to just start to lose more. Yeah, Lazar still here are now losing as well. I think it's because they were chasing after that Genoa general, so they've been caught out. Like, put, Not on, on purpose pulling through, but like, you know, units chasing down that unit. Well, you've got to be careful with your attack orders. Yeah, you can see that it's getting absolutely destroyed because it's trying to get out of this combat and get into uh, chasing off the Genoa general. And yeah, they've lost that and they've lost that cab fight entirely there. But, and it looks like, yeah, this Mamluk general here also slowly dying. Guarded Ducal and also the Antioch Knights pinning him down. And I think that is the Mamluk general that has just died there. Yeah, he has fallen. And the Mamluk army, what is left of it, will probably start to disintegrate. I mean, they've got one medium sword and one heavy like, range melee infantry, one hybrid off the wall. And they're about to get charged here by Antioch and Knights. And there you go, in they go, getting slapped about. Yeah, they are going to get crushed there. Well done. Antioch done a had a really good game, really good game. Over on this side here, still no progress from the Ottomans. I'd just like to say they are getting nowhere. If anything, actually, it looks like the Crusaders are pushing out of the choke point with the dismounted Templars and uh, their Pavis here. Yeah, they've actually made ground at the uh, Templars. Very easy to distinguish the two sides, the white of the Templars against the well, well, multicolored colors of the uh, Ottoman army here. Very multicolored army. But yeah, they're like the Serbian spears trying to break through. Spears pushing in this point is never going to uh, achieve much. They haven't got much other, other than that. They've got spears now turned around, facing off, preparing for the inevitable Crusader arrival. Like they're now worrying that they're going to get sallied on, which they probably will be. And there you go, yeah, the Mamluks are fully gone, so the reinforcements can now shift down the line. But yeah, and so the, yeah, it's Rum and the Mamluks gone, and with the Ottomans being left, it doesn't look good for like the Ban's power. Three thousand five hundred defenders against two thousand two hundred attackers. Uh, the, the attackers started with us. about They're two thousand extra troops, nearly two thousand. They have thrown that advantage away. You can see that the uh, yeah the Ottomans are running back their generals. I, I don't know why they just didn't send them over. They're both cav generals at the end of the day. They could have been useful. It would have been a do or die then, but. It's, it's, it's worth the risk because, I mean, the generals aren't going to be much use here. He's actually, dis oh no, I thought he dismounted him. He hasn't. He's used, I think he's using the towers to try and protect it. In a way, just, just don't pull it back. But uh, yeah, anyway, you could have just sent them over. It's like, it's a do or die because they're not going to win the cav fight now because there's just like five units of cavalry here. So I think, I mean, the one is the Genoa general who is very close to dying and probably shouldn't be out here anymore. So yeah, there's still four units of Antioch cav going up against your two generals. Still not good odds for you, so it's better if you just try to like throw everything in at once. You have the best chance of victory. In that scenario, not every scenario like me does allow for that. I will admit, 
like don't just throw everything in and hope it will work. But in that one, in that scenario with the cow fight there, if you're going to try and stop the Crusader sally out and allow yourself to be able to continue the siege, might as well send the generals as well. You might have got a couple of generals like Antioch and Genoa, which could have been huge. like yeah the uh, Janus is here trying to get side shots to the Templars they're not quite out far enough yet so it's making a massive difference oh well they are uh, losing decisively but yeah the Turks just I don't I mean they actually managed to get a tower here I just like to say don't know why they then, then just land some of these uh, these towers like they've got one here as well just land it the spear unit that's presuming still here yeah, the spin's inside the tower, I think. I don't know if it's bugs. Doesn't look like it is. Looks like they are doing just fine. So they should just land it. So he's actually dismounting the spear unit now. Like, he could have just landed on the walls. Stretch the defenders. Like, if the defenders could put, like, six units to defend this gate, that then you know you're not stretching them. Uh, and this isn't good defensive work anyway. Like, if the defenders are just sending in, like, six units of shock... Well, not six. Well, there's like four units of shock, a spear, and a sword. The six units in total. If you're sending them all into this uh, breach point to try, or this gate to try and hold this, it's not good defensive work either. So, I mean, this guy's for the taking. You could definitely beat him. Like, a, like an average player. I'm not saying he's a bad player. It's just not very good use of your resources. But then also, the Turks are doing a similar thing. Their resource use right now is pretty poor. They're just sending everything through these uh, gates. Yeah, you don't need to send all these units in to try and defend the gate. You're just tiring men out unnecessarily. Better to keep your men fresh and try and cycle them out if you can. You get a chance. Or don't even cycle them out. Just let like the first wave of defenders fight and die. Then send in your next one. And then the next one. It's just better for like in a, in a siege where you actually, you know, it might be quite close and if things can come down to things like stamina and yeah, and, and tiredness. But actually, yeah, Antioch's got another like knight in here. It's Antioch and knight here as well. So yeah, Antioch brought five units of cab, I think. Incredible amount. It might have brought more. I don't know if one of, some of them might have died. Yeah, I feel like one of the sergeants has definitely died. Maybe, or maybe this is just the same sergeant that was cycle charging this entire time. But yeah, they definitely brought five to six units of cavalry. It's an incredible amount of cab being brought by Antioch. I mean, they didn't bring much else. They just brought a shock, it looks like, and some crossbows. They were very much playing a support role. But yeah, look at this. Uh, the Turks now having to turn around so much. And they've got gunners. They've got a line of gunners here. Sitting into a Napoleonic battle, almost. Got the Janissaries here. Firing away. And then we've got the spears behind. So supporting, so the uh, Janissaries can just be protected by them. Yeah, the Janissaries, very good unit to... Uh, bring and try and use against the cav here they can form square as well so that actually just give them some cav protection and uh, yeah it looks like uh, also the range of the uh, gunners they are like hitting the in the uh, archers and also hitting the cav behind so yeah very very nice that actually might take a little bit of time to get through it looks like if anything i just yeah it looks like they're sending out crossbows it looks like antioch sending out crossbows to deal with them and looks like you know his general's actually going to go in on a, a bit of a forlorn hope in a hail mary sort of style charge going in and he's charging into the janitor I think they form square yeah they form their hollow square and there you go the generals died for Genoa there uh, so yeah Genoa's army I don't know if he has much left we'll probably rout and looks like actually we're going to see uh, Maronite archers going into melee so they're going to try and pin these guys down not a bad idea actually allows the Cavs to get closer so yeah these Maronite archers probably not going to win but it actually just you know slows um, it just stops the, the gunners from firing down and hitting these Cavs now the cab can come in, as you can see here, and we also got, it looks like, uh, the general of Jerusalem coming out as well. And you can see the Janissaries are winning, and also the Maronites are dying very quickly. So they're going to hurry on to this cab, and he needs to get it here soon, rather than later. Because the uh, infantry will start to set up again, these gunners will set up, and they'll start blasting once again. Here we go, looks like the general's bodyguard's about again there. And we're going to see the uh, mounted sergeants charge in. And yeah, I mean, that was a pretty devastating charge. I don't know how well, how good the Apollo Square is, but because they are losing decisively on that charge there. I think it just gives them some cap bonuses, but not much. 
I think you also have to form it up well in advance, like be formed up like a shield wall. Uh, gets bonuses the longer it's formed up. Fit the same with the square, I think. Like we uh, we hit, used it in the ch in the Battle of Chaldran as well, and it did not. They did again. The gunners kind of eventually got killed off by the uh, the cav. Enemy yeah, yeah, the Jerusalem's general actually. I think that's kind of, square kind of held by the looks of it. Charge down to the general. He's trying to fall back. He's going to lose riders from that. And yeah, it doesn't look great here for uh, the Turks. It's like I mean, they're trying to support this fight here with spears. Very good. And look, but yeah, the spears are just standing here most. They should really, I mean, it's not a bad idea to be honest, just to stand there because Antioch could just charge into him. The men are broken, but also, probably would support some of these melee fights if you can. But yeah, the Antioch, Antioch and Knights there didn't even care about the uh, spears, they just flattened them. We've got crossbows here focusing down the gunners, good use on them. And you can see the uh, general trying to get in here, he's trying to hunt down these uh, Turkish generals. I mean, you got to take this fight. This is a 2v1. you got to take that. There is the Sultan fighting on the front lines. I think we actually have two Sultans here. Uh, yeah, there's the other one. He's, you know, he's like, yes, come on, guys. Let's go support my, uh, my brother. My brother, Sultan. He's standing there. I think he's just firing. But yeah, the Turks are now getting side out by uh, the Antiochian Knights here and also dismounted Templars. So they are starting to route. I think army losses is also coming into it along with uh, obviously just losing the battle. They're just like, run, flee. The walls of Constantinople are too much for us. The general hit for the Antioch is losing though. This CPI cap is the best around. This general is one of the toughest to kill. I will say it. And he's... Oh, that's not good though. The other one is breaking pretty early on, but I think it's army loss is coming into it. Side charge here from the uh, King's Bodyguard of Jerusalem might help out the fight. And also the Antioch Knights here uh, sort of getting stuck in. And yeah, I think army loss is, is now just coming into it. And we are going to see the Crusaders hold Jerusalem with about 2,700 men left. Uh, they have defeated this vast army. And yeah, really well done there. By the uh, by, the Crusaders. Honestly, it's a tough map to attack, so I'll give it to the Turks and the uh, Mamluks. It was uh, going to be a hard one, but yeah, they didn't make it easy with their tactics. I don't think uh, they tried to make as many holes in the wall as possible, but then yeah, just like the uh, like the sort of like very one-dimensional attacks in a few areas, especially here by the uh, Sultan of Rome. That just wasted an entire army when he could have just shifted to support his Mamluk ally. Um, really, to be honest. It's a 4v3. Like, they still had an army advantage. He could have just shifted where he wanted to support it. Uh, and there you go. A Pyrrhic victory for Antioch and its allies. So we'll have a quick look at the end results. So yeah, this one was sent in by Bulk, who was playing as uh, the Antioch army. So thank you very much, man, for sending this one in. He had, yeah, a lot of cav here. Actually, six cav units, if you include his general. So he had 258 kills with his general's bodyguard there. His hospitaler is getting uh, 274 kills, the best of the bunch there. The uh, Templar is not so great, but they didn't see so much action. The uh, crossbow is 252 kills with one of his uh, crossbows there. And then we've got... It uh, looks like uh, Mantis Sergeant's here getting 162 kills before they fell. And then his Knights did very well. 346 kills, 416 kills. Very, very nice. Then we have Fjord playing as Genoa. Oh, the Caraccio standard. I don't know where it went, but it died. No, I should have kept an eye on that. Um, but yeah, the Guardia Ducal, 213 kills there before they fell. Uh, 171 kills with his uh, swords here. 178 with another one. Uh, his crossbows, 400... Uh, sorry, not 400. 147. 158 with another one here. And then his knights also getting 236 kills. Like The defenders brought a lot of cab and it really worked. His gunners, 292 kills. And then we have Ike playing as Jerusalem. 181 kills with his king's bodyguard there. 257 kills with the hospitalers. 214 kills with the templars there. Uh, and then his swords, yeah, not so much uh, great kills. And his Templar Knights here getting 123 kills and his crossbows 147. Then we have um, Thetarius here playing as Rum, uh, getting, yeah, not many kills it seems. He had a rough game and just kind of like got himself killed uh, against the, uh, well, basically the defences of 
uh, Antioch. Um, I mean, uh, 89 kills with the Janissaries. Um, 84 kills with the Pole Arms. Yeah, nothing much. Then we have uh, Folk Eren playing as the uh, one of the Ottoman armies. Uh, again, not great kills, but some uh, ones that got triple figures. 136 kills with one of his Janissaries. Shock. A sword getting 117 kills. 152 with the Gunners there. Uh, his uh, Grenadiers, the Nafatoons, getting 100, uh, 83 kills. Um, and only the more is going to getting 64 kills is rough. These guys usually get triple figures every time. Then we have Alpha Sama playing as the Mamelukes. Uh, his uh, infantry had a rough, rough game. He brought a lot of lights, though. Um, so that, in fairness, is, was always going to be tough for him. 71 kills with one of his mediums, though. His Tabadere, which is a... Uh, I think this is a yeah high period one. 175 kills. Did he only bring the one Tabadere? Uh, oh, no, he brought another one here. It's a, uh, another like a late period one. 263 kills. If I only brought the two, though. I would have definitely brought more if he could. Um... And then the uh, Gunners, 121 kills. And yeah, the Cav, yeah, lights are never going to do much. Then we have Raz Tujo playing as the final Ottoman army. Um, his hybrids did very well, 173 kills, 135. His Shock, 125 kills. And his Cav, yeah, just got outclassed by those uh, Christian Knights and outnumbered as well, by looks of it as well. So yeah, there you go, guys. The Crusaders have held Constantinople and have managed to defend Christendom here today. I hope you did enjoy the 1212 AD siege. If you did, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show support. And I'll see you folks in the next one. Bye for now.